Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to Queen Anne's County on this uh, beautiful Eastern Shore afternoon. I'm Chris Corcorino. I am the president of the Queen Anne's County Commissioners. Uh, we have uh, several guests here that I'd like to introduce. We have uh, Senator Ben Cardin. We have uh, Colonel Pinchason of the Army Corps of Engineers. William Doyle, Executive Director of the Maryland Port Administration. Secretary Hadley Riccio from the Department of Natural Resources. Christian, uh, sorry, Kristen Fiddler, the Director of Harbor Development and the Maryland Port Administration. Ms. Melissa Kelly, the Eastern Shore Field Representative for Senator Van Hollen. Grayson Middleton, the Eastern Shore Field Representative for Governor Hogan's office. Mike Arntz from Congressman Harris's uh, office. Myself from Queen Anne's County and Todd Mon, our County Administrator for Queen Anne's County. We have Senator Addie Eckert here, uh, Steve Chanley from Queen Anne's County Parks and Recreations, Joel Dunn from the Chesapeake Conservancy, Ms. LaRouche from the National Fish and Wildlife, and we have Marsha Pradines from Blackwater Wildlife Refuge and the Friends of Blackwater, uh, Keith Grafis also from Congressman Harris's office, and Heather Tonelli, who is the uh, Director of Economic Development for Queen Anne's County. And now I'll hand it over to uh, Senator Cardin for some opening remarks. Well, first, Chris, thank you very much for your hospitality. Thank you for arranging such a beautiful day. And after the weather we've been having, it's really lovely to be here. Uh, and I thank you all for joining us today. This is a big deal, what we're announcing today. Uh, I was talking to uh, uh, our colonel here about the fact, and I was also talking uh, with our great administrator from the Maryland Port, Bill Doyle, about this being done in an orderly way, the next location for our environmental restoration of our dredge material uh, in Midbay. It's a big deal to be able to have the continuity of a location where we can put the dredge material for keeping our harbors competitive with dredging. Now I go back a while when it was very controversial to try to find a location for where we we're going to put the dredge material. Some people have won and lost their political careers on locations. If you go back far enough in Maryland politics. But we have a location that all stakeholders are very proud about. Poplar Island was a huge success. And I really want to acknowledge and congratulate my predecessor, Senator Paul Sarbanes, for his visionary leadership in establishing Poplar Island. It was unique at its time. Because look, it cost a little bit more money, but we ended up with a positive impact on our community with environmental restoration that provided habitat for the species that are important for the quality of the Chesapeake Bay and the waters. And it allowed us to have a predictable site to include dredge material. It was controversial for the time because of those issues. And now, quite frankly, we have so many locations that are trying to copy what we're doing. And that's good. That's good. But we're now going to be able to have the next location, because Popular Island is at capacity or near capacity in a timely way without going through a crisis as to where we're going to put dredge material. So it's not quite getting the same amount of attention we would have if we had a problem of saying we have to hold off dredging. I was with Bill Doyle with the USTR tie and the UK trade ambassador in the port of Baltimore and we saw firsthand jobs being created in Maryland because we have dredged the depth necessary in order to deal with these uh, th these Panama super containers capacity we have it we have the cranes we have the berths because we had Poplar Island and we now have Mid Bay we could get some more business for the Port of Baltimore and create some more jobs and, I, and Madam Secretary, I want to congratulate the state. The state has been, this has been their priority. So all the stakeholders have been together on this. But in order to keep the continuity, we needed to be able to have funding for construction 
of Mid-Bay in a timely way. And if you follow what's going on in Congress, you'll see that we don't always pass budgets in a timely way. We don't always pass budgets. So it was not without risk that we weren't going to be able to get this done. So when the president's FY22 budget came out, there weren't funds for the construction. We wanted to do something about that. So working with Senator Van Hollen in the Senate, the two of us said, we've got to get money in this construction year. We don't want to take a chance on what's going to happen next year. You know, FY23 is an election year. And then you're in the FY24 and we have a crisis. So we wanted to take advantage of it. And then working with our entire congressional delegation, I want to thank Congressman Harris for his help. We worked to make sure that we put this as an, a priority. And we were able to get the second largest earmark through the Appropriations Committee in the Senate, $37.5 million, as a congressional earmark in the Senate bill. But that didn't end it. We then were able to pass the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill, which eased money up. And the administration released that $37.5 million in the revised work plan for the Army Corps. So we had the money in the bank, but we didn't stop there. As a result of this announcement today, I think because we scheduled this, <laughs> and we might want to schedule another meeting next week to get some more money, the administration added $46.5 million for a total of $84 million in the FY22 work plan, this year's work plan. The money is there. We're moving forward. So this really is big news. And I, I want to understand that. Because it means, and the Maryland Port Administration understands this, Bill Doyle understands this, it means that when we negotiate with the carriers to come into the Port of Baltimore, they know that for the next several decades, we can handle the dredging and the dredge material in regards to the port activities. This is one thing that's off the table as far as any risk factors at all. We got it done. Thank you, Team Maryland, the entire team. We got this done. So I am extremely excited about this announcement today. I think it is really big news. I'm proud of what we were able to do together. And once again, I, I want to acknowledge that this started with a vision from my predecessor, and we're here today to make sure that we're continuing to do this. Next chapter, we're not finished. The next chapter is that we're going to be passing a Water Resources Development Act, a word of bill. I chaired a subcommittee on the Environment and Public Works Committee that, has, that works on this bill. And the priority is to expand beneficial use of dredge material as a policy of this nation. Blackwater Wildlife Refuge, we've used dredge material to restore wetlands there, and it's successful. We want to have more projects like that where we have beneficial use of dredge material so it's a win-win situation. So today we're proud of the announcement in regards to Mid-Bay. We're proud that we're going to be able to deal with James and Barron Islands to restore those islands so that they will be a plus to the community, plus to the, our commitment to the cleanup of the Chesapeake Bay, to our economy, and to our environment. A win-win situation for Team Maryland. We're very proud of the announcement that we can make today, and we thank you all for joining us here today. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Um, and now I would like to invite up uh, Colonel uh, Pinchason from the Army Corps of Engineers. Good morning. I'm very thankful to be here with you today. Senator Cardin, staff from Senator Van Hollen, Senator Har uh, Congressman Harris, thank you for your unwavering support uh, to the Mid-Chesapeake Bay Ecosystem Restoration Project and your inspiring commitment to our nation's resiliency and sustainability. It's truly an honor to work with our longstanding partners in the Maryland Port Administration 
and the Department of Natural Resources. And it's so clear when you see our teammates in action, working together, true partnership that our shared organizations have, this collective dedication to duty and service. It's a really powerful component that will be no doubt key to our successful um, delivery of this monumental project. Building upon our learning and success from Poplar Island, which we just completed our five-year expansion there, uh, we look forward to Midbay, where we will restore 2,144 acres, that's about 908 football fields of, of habitat. And 1,200 of those acres will be uh, uh, wetlands. Restoring this remote island habitat provides erosion protection and simultaneously safeguards the existing habitats to welcome back the returning wildlife. Already on Barren Island, our surveys have identified 91 species of birds. And this is really phenomenal because we are, we are seeing how the deterioration of their stopover spots, especially during the spring and fall routes that they take, have really dwindled. And to see that resurgence is incredible. We've also observed amazingly diverse fish concentrations, which will no doubt be joined by reptiles and, and mammals that will be coming back as well, and all those which have dwindled over the last 150 years. We're also very excited that Barron, and especially James Island, will provide over 30 years of dredge material placement capacity, which is essential to the Corps of Engineers and Baltimore District specifically, our mission to maintaining our federal channels. And we're so proud that this collective work has become an example, an international example, of what beneficial reuse of dredge material can do, as it, and it expands and integrates these lines of effort that enable us to improve our navigation, preserve our ecosystem, and progress with the overarching goal of restoring the Chesapeake Bay. A win-win project like this is a remarkable example of what we can do together when we take a holistic approach to planning for the future, especially in the, in the face of climate change and our transportation needs. Um, and I feel it's such a privilege to be a part of this team uh, that's protecting our communities, improving our nation's ports and waterways, and just protecting the environment. Together, I feel we are maximizing our experiences and our capabilities to develop and deliver enduring solutions for some of these challenges that, we lie, that lie ahead. So we're looking forward to getting started, and thanks to you and with you, we'll be building strong. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, now I'd like to have uh, William Doyle, the Executive Director of the Maryland Port Administration. Thank you, Commissioner. So, you can't do anything without partnerships. And what you see here is a prime example. From the governor, right on through state government. I want to say thank you to the Dorchester st state and local folks that are here. I want to say thank you to Senator Van Hollen, Senator Cardin, Congressman Harris, Secretary Hadaway Riccio. The partnership that we have here in Maryland is the best in the world. I've been to a lot of ports around the country, a lot of ports around the world. And when it comes to the port, and when it comes to the Chesapeake Bay, we all speak with one voice. And we have a delegation in the federal government with Senator Cardin, Senator Van Hollen, and the congressional delegation that fight every single day for the money and the funding to keep commerce moving and to protect the bay. Our partnership with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Colonel Pinchazen, is the best, I could say the best, in the country. We have a unique place here 
and the Army Corps of Engineers relationship because we have what's known as dredge management containment facilities. And we also have the beneficial use of dredge material for your islands such as Poplar and the Barren Islands. And part of the Port of Baltimore Maryland Port Administration is the harbor development group that I have in the Maryland Port Administration run by Kristen Fiddler. Her team is unmatched. I wish I could have all Kristen Fiddlers because they are something. She's the director of our harbor development. Um, as you heard Senator Cardin say, the Army Corps of Engineers just added an additional $47 million that will go towards construction, engineering, construction, management, and stakeholder coordination. Thank you again, Army Corps of Engineers. Dredging is the lifeline of the Port of Baltimore. Simply put, without it, we would not be able to handle most of the ships that come into the Port of Baltimore. With our partner, Ports America Chesapeake, we are getting ready to put four more ultra-large Neo Panamax cranes into service. The Port of Baltimore is one of Maryland's top economic generators, with more than 15,000 direct jobs and 14,000 jobs in Maryland that are linked to the port. 140,000, excuse me. Properly dredging our channels is the linchpin of all of that. Through our coastal restoration and dredging programs, the Maryland Port Administration is the leading creator of wetlands in Maryland, the port. Projects like Mid Bay restore remote islands that have washed away following decades of erosion. They also create new wildlife, habitat, and provide much needed shoreline protection. The Mid Bay project will ultimately replace the Paul Sarbanes Poplar Island Environmental Restoration Project which has been Maryland's primary site for the reuse of sediment dredged from the Port of Baltimore shipping channels. Construction for Poplar's final expansion, which added four new wetland cells and one upland cell, was completed last year. However, we will still be able to take dredge material for the next decade. James Island will have 2,072 acres restored with 55% preserved as wetlands habitat and 45% as upland habitat. At Byron Island, 72 acres will be restored as wetlands and the project will also include the installation of breakwaters to protect the island remnants and adjacent seagrass beds. I want to stop there on, on the environmental side because there is so much benefit. These barrier islands, is co you know, they, they are coastal restoration. They protect the mainland. They've disappeared. Poplar Island is now back. We'll get Barron. We'll get James. That's all dredge material. And the history of dredge material is that you would dredge that material. You would take it from the seafloor, tow it out to sea, miles away, and just dump it. Maryland is a leader worldwide. If you look around the world, dredge material now has value. That value is coastal restoration. That's what we are doing here. That's what you did. The Dutch, the Belgians, Europe, they looked to Poplar Island and what happened in Maryland in order to keep the Netherlands above water. And finally, on the economic side, you heard what Senator Cardin said about the ships. We now have a situation where the ocean carriers can rely on the dredging of the channels in Baltimore in order to bring their ships there. And then on top of that, it is a transportation supply chain. If you take a look around what's happened in the past six years in and around the Port of Baltimore, it's your distribution, sorting, fulfillment and supply centers, the amount of Amazon distribution centers, Home Depot, Trade Point Atlantic, the rail lines, what we're going to do all the way to Chicago, starts in Baltimore. Now you have the retailers and the folks that you buy your goods from can be confident in the fact that we can build more in Maryland in order to get the goods into the stream of commerce 
because of the dredging and the funding that we have for Mid-Bay Island. With that, I thank you very much. I want to again thank our entire partnership, state, federal, local. Thank you very much. Thank you, Executive Director Doyle. And now uh, I'd like to have uh, Senator Hathaway Rico come up. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today. I realize that I am batting cleanup, so I promise I am going to be brief. Uh, but I have to say that it is so personally and professionally gratifying to be here today for this announcement. Uh, my first legislative session in the Maryland General Assembly was in 2004, and as Senator Eckerd remembers very well, uh, one of the first initiatives we took up as an Eastern Shore delegation was this project. Um, working with then Senator Sarbanes and then Senator Mikulski and other members of the federal delegation, um, it was really a priority for us because the citizens of the Midshore have been experiencing a lot of social and environmental issues as a result of erosion. We've had large amounts of property loss. We've had historic grave markers literally falling into the water because of erosion. We've lost important habitat at Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge. So as has been alluded to before today, in addition to the obvious commerce benefits that we get for the port, there are a lot of environmental and social benefits that we will get from this project as well. It has long been a priority of the Hogan administration, and thank goodness it has remained a priority for our federal delegation. And I also want to take a moment to thank the Maryland Port Administration and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers for your ongoing commitment and your continued engagement with local government and all of the stakeholders that are involved. So last but not least, from a Department of Natural Resources perspective, I just want to again reiterate how uh, so many co-benefits will result from this project. It really is a great example of tying together environmental and economic benefit for the good of the citizens of Maryland. And again, thank you for allowing me to be here today. Thank you, Madam Secretary. I believe that's everybody we had to speak today. So thank you all for coming out. Uh, please make sure you spend your money in Queen Anne's County before you leave. Thank you. Hey, Chris, thanks.